Hi guys, today we're going to look at the confidence interval for a coefficient and we're going to see two things. One is that the conclusion from doing a t-test on testing the significance of an individual coefficient is the same as the conclusion by interpreting the confidence interval for that coefficient and two that the information contained in a confidence interval is more than just by running a t-test. First let's see how we go about computing a say in this case 95% confidence interval for one of the slope parameters. So here's some state to output. We'll run um, a regression here that's the dependent variable. We've got one, two, three, four, five exponential variables and an intercept. Now I'm just going to be interested in this one just for illustration. So I'm not going to list them all these beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 and so on. So let's just call this one beta. Guys, unless you have to prove it, the formula for the confidence interval for any of these parameters is the estimate of the coefficient and then we perform two operations plus or minus some value from the t table times the standard error. We're going to do this guy here. Coefficient estimate is given by this. Standard error is given over here. And actually our answer is right here. Right, So we're going to see if we get these two. Okay guys, um, I've done some work for you. I've looked up the critical value for you. So the degree of freedom being n minus p n is the number of observations given here, 27. The number of parameters and the mean part of the equation, just count those up. You see there are 6. So it's 21 degree of freedom. Using the table, we only need to, if we're doing this at the 5%, 95% confidence interval, it means what we're after, area here comes to, say, 1 or 100%. So what we're after in the tails is 2.5%. So what I've done, this guy here, 2.07. Okay. Now substitute in minus 0 0.12, that, all that stuff into there, you do it, and then do two operations plus or minus this number times the standard error, and you're going to get these two numbers. Okay, just check that. Uh, I've done it and, it, and it's correct. I would like to add though, remember the answer in a confidence interval should be in round brackets, so we're going to write round braces, round braces, and then that number there. Let's just uh, two decimal places is enough, comma, and then the higher number that way round. Okay, to do decimal places, because in maths notation, this means that my value, let's call it x, is between that is bigger than A and less than B. You know if you've done a first course in statistics and you've done confidence intervals is um, that you can think of this answer as saying it's 95% confident that this interval traps the true parameter. Let's go over to the T stat. Oh by the way I re re realize I smacked my lips there but sorry I can't help it. I'm on the human. Right. This T Stat minus 1.27. I've shown you how to do t test before. If you look at this guy, the peak corresponding p value, 0.11, it's bigger than 0.05, so we do not reject the null. So it's not significant. In other words, we do not reject the null that the slope is zero. I could have said the same thing by interpreting the coefficient here. How? we can see that this is a minus number and a plus number. The answer, the true value is trapped somewhere between these two numbers and so since zero is contained in here so it's the same thing as saying there it, that that beta is zero. So that's p first part of the presentation. Uh, we've reached the same conclusion with the t-test as uh, for the confidence interval on the slope parameter. Secondly now I, I said that we can get 
more information, a confidence interval gives us more information than conducting a t-test. What do I mean by that? All right, let's just look at this. So here's a line, here's zero. These are plus values over here. Obviously these are negative values going the other way. And we'll think about a t-test, testing the significance of beta, right? So the true value we're testing the null hypothesis that's that beta is zero. Let's think about this picture this for, uh, for the confidence interval. The upper number is just slightly above zero. Uh, okay, let's stick it here. Can I do it in a different color? Somewhere there, all right, somewhere there. Just guessing here. That's minus 2.7, so it's somewhere over here. Okay, more negative. And if I join up these two dots, it means that the tr it traps true value. Now zero is in that interval in this picture showing you yeah it crosses this so it's it's in this interval and that's why that's the same as saying that we do not reject the null that uh, the slope is zero. In this picture we can see that midway between these two lines that is beta hat. Right? Because you can see from the formula that's what this thing is doing. It's saying beta and go up but plus that much. From beta go up by that much and go down by the same amount. So that's why it's midway between the two endpoints. Now can I just compare this with let's say suppose instead my confidence interval looked more like uh, okay more like this. All right, let me just have a look look more like this. Right, symmetric, symmetric, right, so symmetric, that distance is the same as that distance. Now what I'm going to say here really goes for people who are doing confidence intervals where they've collected data from some experiment. So maybe you're an engineer, a psychologist, uh, what else? You're, you're a biostatistician, anything that requires an experiment as opposed to an econometrician. Recall, for a confidence interval, guys, that if the sample size goes up, the standard error goes down. Okay, idea being that the more information you have, the more precise your estimate's going to be, and preciseness means that standard error goes down. So if I increase the sample size, this number is going to get smaller, so what, uh, this number stays the same, so what's going to happen to the width? Uh, width? It's going to get narrower, isn't it? It's going to get narrower. Well, if you're a person who is conducting an experiment, often you're thinking about sample size. What sample size should I pick to try to pick up an effect? Okay, Let's compare these two. These two, can you see that zero is almost at the end? If this moved a bit, if this went a bit narrower, then point, we could suddenly find that the beta, we do, not, we, we, we do reject the null that the beta is zero. If I shifted this, you know, shifted this end down here, shift that up there. How? By increasing the sample size. So this is like on the borderline of uh, rejecting the null. This one is nowhere near the borderline rejecting the null because you can see the, the each side of the width is quite long. So even if I increase n, it's going to get narrow, but maybe not that too much. Now that story I've just told you, you can't see with the t-test because the t-test is just going to say, you know, at five percent level, you reject yes or no, and that's what one why one reason why people in the experimental uh, doing experiments when they're writing things up more um, more encouraged to present the confidence intervals and sometimes they present both the confidence intervals and the t-test. Um, but those people doing the econometrics, you find, well, from experience, you find they just um, they're okay, they're just doing the t-test, they're not too bothered with the confidence interval. But that's just how we, the way things are. Okay, so that's it, the two things done today, and uh, yep, confidence intervals. See you in the next one, guys.